There's a new technology I think you should know about. It's the ability to detect hydrogen gas in the breath. Well, why is that important? Well, when you consume any food, you do not produce hydrogen gas from that food, but bacteria do. And that can help you decide whether bacteria have taken over your gastrointestinal tract and are responsible for a whole range of health problems and symptoms. Well, this new device is a wonderful, very elegantly created device called an AIR device, A-I-R-E. The, the company who makes it is called Food Marble. Now, I do not have any relationship with the company. I have no compensation for telling you about it. It's just a cool device. I've talked about this device with the creators, uh, and I gave them some of my thoughts on how to improve the use and application of this device because they, they released this device and said, this is a device to help you navigate the FODMAPS diet. That is a diet that is devoid of many carbs and sugars and prebiotic fibers to reduce the symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome. And so it identifies the things as fructose malabsorption or fructose intolerance. Well, what I suggested to them that it, this device is really most useful as a SIBO device, SIBO detecting uh, device. That is, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. That's a very common situation in which the bacteria that are supposed to stay in your colon have ascended and taken residence in the ileum, jejunum, duodenum, and stomach, up to 30 feet of infection with unhealthy species. And these are not just any old bacteria, bacteria. These are unhealthy species like Campylobacter and E. coli and many others. And when these bacteria rise, ascend, and proliferate, they uh, end up causing many, many health problems. For instance, it can show up as irritable bowel syndrome. It's a very common way. The majority of people with, with irritable bowel or IBS have really had SIBO. Fibromyalgia, virtually everybody with fibromyalgia has uh, uh, SIBO, and often to severe degrees. People who have unexplained abdominal symptoms, unexplained diarrhea, unexplained abdominal pain, those kinds of symptoms, and they've had upper endoscopy, colonoscopy, and the gastroenterologist says, we have no idea, did you want an antidepressant? At least half of those people, if not the majority, have SIBO. Unexplained skin rashes, a very common manifestation of SIBO. Fat malabsorption, if you look in the toilet and you see fat staining around the rim of the toilet or you see little fat droplets or little pools of fat, that's fat malabsorption. You're unable to digest fats because uh, many of the metabolites produced by bacteria are blocking your digestive capacity to break down fats and it ends up, the fat ends up in the toilet. Intolerance to legumes or other sources of prebiotic fibers. If you say things like, I can't eat beans, black beans, or chickpeas, or hummus, or put indole in your coffee, and it results in abdominal discomfort, excessive gas, uh, dark thoughts, anxiety, panic attacks, especially if they occur in the first 60 minutes after you consume those things. If you have that, that reaction, that's virtually certain that you have SIBO. So this device, this air device, is so useful for detecting hydrogen gas in the breath. I liken it to uh, blood glucose testing. Blood glucose testing was a game changer for people with diabetes. I remember the old days before we had finger stick blood glucose as a check, and people who had diabetes had a horrible experience. They could have profound hyper glycemia, low blood sugars. They could have profound hyperglycemia and go into comas. Imagine you have a two-year-old or a four-year-old who's playing and blood sugar drops from just being active and your child goes into a coma. How terrifying is that? And you couldn't check their blood sugar. You could dip your urine, but dipping the urine reflects blood sugars from the hours before. It doesn't give you an immediate reaction. So this was horrible and it led to numerous complications of diabetes. Coma, brain damage, uh, acceleration of kidney failure, it wouldn't be uncommon to go blind in your mid-20s from type 1 diabetes, heart disease, etc. I saw this happen. When finger stick blood glucose technology came out and became a consumer level device, it changed the management of diabetes. Diabetes is still a problem, but it's so much better than it used to be. You don't see coma as much. You see a delay in the complications of diabetes because blood sugar can be better managed because you know what the blood sugar is. You can adjust your dose of insulin or other drug. 
So it, the, the f technology for finger stick glucose put in the consumer's hands was an absolute game changer. It changed the entire landscape of diabetes. That's what we've got here in our ability to test for breath hydrogen. It's going to change the entire landscape of gastrointestinal health because you can test for hydrogen gas on your own. Here's an odd situation. If you tell your doctor, hey, I think I have SIBO, or I have these symptoms like fat malabsorption, or I'm intolerant to prebiotic fibers, or I have IBS or fibromyalgia, I believe I might have SIBO. Could you test me for it? He'll say, I don't know what that is, or that's stupid, don't waste my time, because this science is quite new, and you know it takes at least 20 years for new science to trickle down to the practitioner who was trained decades earlier, right? Or your primary care doctor says, I don't know what that is, let me send you to a gastroenterologist. The gastroenterologist says, okay, we'll do an upper endoscopy and a colonoscopy. Good news, you don't have stomach cancer, you don't have colon cancer, see ya. And you say, well, wait, 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 what about my question about SIBO? He says, I don't care about that, I didn't see anything at the end of the scope, don't waste my time, or at most, he gives you an antibiotic, like rifaximin, sends you on your way. Doesn't tell you how you got it, doesn't tell you how to keep, uh, prevent recurrences, tells you nothing. And so you're left on your own with this big problem that will inevitably come back because he didn't tell you how to keep it from recurring. So having this device in your own hands is incredibly empowered. Now, it's not as simple as blowing. There's a whole sequence you should go through in testing how you test it. In a nutshell, what you do is you take a baseline value after an overnight fast. So fast overnight, take a baseline value. It's very easy, blow into it. Your smartphone tells you what the value is, zero to 10. So maybe it's 1.2, a very low value. You consume a prebiotic fiber. It could be a teaspoon of inulin in your coffee. It could be a raw white potato cut uh, coarsely into your smoothie or, or shake. It could be a small serving, maybe a quarter cup of legumes of some form, a little bit of black beans or red beans or chickpeas or hummus. Then test your breath again every 15 minutes for the first two hours, every 30 minutes for the, next, for, the la for the last hour. So a total of three hours. But if you turn positive, stop. You've established that you have SIBO. So for instance, let's say you start at 1.2 before the prebiotic fiber. You eat your prebiotic fiber. 15 minutes later, it's, it's 2.1. 30 minutes later, it's 9.8. Stop. You've got SIBO without a doubt. Okay, so stop. Now, the sooner it happens, particularly within the first hour, you know you have SIBO, okay? And that has consequences, even beyond that of fibromyalgia, fat malabsorption, IBS, etc. It has real-world implications, such as developing uh, autoimmune diseases, like rheumatoid arthritis. It makes uh, ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease worse. It makes celiac disease worse. It leads you down the path of diverticular disease, diverticulitis, and even colon cancer. and amplifies your risk for diseases like Alzheimer's, dementia, and heart disease. So just ignoring SIBO is a really bad idea. And SIBO is incredibly common. I, that's a whole other conversation, but my estimate of the number of Americans with SIBO is somewhere around 100 million people. That is an epidemic on a par with the epidemics of pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes. It is one in three Americans have this incredible problem for a whole long list of reasons, including prior antibiotic exposure, uh, exposure to steroids, corrupt foods that have herbicide, pesticide residues, prior grain, sugar consumption, etc. Now, if you establish you have SIBO, what do you do about it? That's a whole long conversation that we're not going to have right now. You can find introductory conversations in my Wheat Belly blog videos and written and text material, also my undoctored blog. But if you really want to go into detail on how to do this, it's more detailed than we can just convey, say, via a YouTube video or a blog post. So we have an extended in-depth conversation in my undoctored inner circle. For those of you interested in treating your SIBO, in particular using herbal antibiotics, and this is the key. Gaining control of an exceptionally common problem that if you don't address can lead to long-term real health difficulties. So as I say, this air device is just like having blood glucose finger sticks. It's going to be a game changer for how we manage gastrointestinal conditions, how we monitor it for recurrence, how we assess the, uh, the, the uh, response to therapy, 
And it's something you can do in your own kitchen. You don't need the doctor. You don't need the doctor to identify SIBO. You don't need the doctor to eradicate SIBO. You don't need the doctor to detect recurrences. You can manage this on your own. But it would be help helpful to have some benign, helpful assistance. That's what we try to do for you.